Okay, so now that we all have some background information on what GDPR is, let's take a look at what Sugar is introducing in Sugar8 to help you act in compliance with GDPR. We're going to be diving in deeper to each of these, but at a really high level, uh, the key features that Sugar is introducing here include the ability to mark data as PII, that personally identifiable information category, um, the ability to manage data subject requests, such as requesting a copy of their data, like Justin mentioned, or the ability to um, the request to export or erase their data. And of course, introducing the ability to erase data from sugar modules and audit logs so that you can comply with those erasure requests. Got a link here on the screen. Again, that's gonna be in your resources section, and I'm sure Deneen will send it out in her follow-up email as well. Um, if you're looking for more details, Sugar does have a really nice blog post on their community explaining exactly how the new features that they're introducing line up with GDPR, even citing specific articles of GDPR that they're lining up with. Okay, so how do we track PII in Sugar? Well, they've made it very easy with just an additional checkbox in the studio. You can see here in the screenshot that there is a checkbox labeled personal information and it even has a little help screen that will tell you all of the different places that this checkbox will affect in Sugar. It makes it really easy to go into your system and start checking things that you need to track. Things like name, email address, phone number, uh, among a lot of other data that could be considered PII. Many of the new GDPR-related features in Sugar are managed through a new module that they're introducing called Data Privacy. Um, so the Data Privacy module is designed to help you manage and track your data privacy-related requests. So as people do request an export of their data or to know what information you've got about them or to have data erased, this gives you a place to manage those requests, make sure you're not losing, tr keeping, or losing track of any of those, you're keeping track of them. Um, it also gives you a place to track the fact that you have followed through on those requests, going back to that accountability requirement. This is going to allow you to note when the request was completed and the actions that you took based off of that request. There are a lot of request types built into the module already. Um, again, going back to that list of rights that Justin defined, Sugar has matched those two various request types within the data privacy module. Um, so requesting a privacy policy, send me my personal information, request, erase information, export, and so on. Um, and in particular, there is a lot of functionality that Sugar built into this data privacy module around erasure, erasure requests. So obviously this is something that has to be handled in a very careful way because if someone requests to have their data erased, GDPR requires that you do in fact release it, re erase it unless you have a reason to reject that request, in which case of course you would track the rejection and communicate that back to someone as to why you can't delete their data. Um, you have some sort of relevant business purpose where you still need that information. So within the data privacy module, um, Sugar has added a special process to erase data from Sugar. This process is restricted to system administrators and users uh, who have been given access to the data privacy manager role. This is a new role that Sugar has added to the uh, role management section of the administrator tools and you can add one or more users into this role in order to give them access to be able to process these erased requests. And a really key point here to note is that erasing is different than deleting. So if you delete a contact from your database, uh, that's going to delete that entire contact record, first of all, um, not just selected data that actually needs to be deleted. So it's a little bit broader in that sense that it, it's taking a broad stroke and deleting everything when maybe you could retain some data and just have to delete the personal uh, PII data. But also, deleting data doesn't necessarily actually remove it from your database. Uh, Sugar does by default a soft delete of data, so the data actually stays in your database, it's just not accessible through the user interface. 
and that's actually not enough in terms of compliance with GDPR. GDPR requires that that data be truly erased, and so um, deleting would not necessarily meet that that need. One important note, and this is going to come back up again later on a related slide, is that Sugar's erasure process is going to remove erased data from the audit logs, um, but not from the activity stream. So more about that in a few minutes. And I will demo the erasure process in just a second, but one more slide before I do. Um, a couple of other notes. The data privacy module in Sugar does work with custom modules. So if you have built any custom modules in Sugar that contain personally identifiable information, all you have to do in order to use the data privacy module with your custom modules is add a relationship in Studio uh, between the data privacy module and your custom module. And it also, of course, works with custom fields. Uh, Justin showed you earlier that PII flag that is now available in Studio. And that's what you use to mark which fields contain PII, which is therefore the data that's available for erasing. All right, so let's go ahead and hop over into Sugar. I'm in the data privacy module now. And you can see I've got data in here with a variety of different request types. I've got the ability to track different statuses for whether those requests have been completed or not, or not as well as priority, um, source and so on. So let's go into this erasure request. And in this case, uh, it looks like Gary has contacted us and asked us to erase his PII information. So that request, um, you know, should go through your process for evaluating if that request should be accepted uh, or if there's a business reason to reject that request. And then assuming that we have de decided to go ahead and erase their data, um, I'm going to first want to make sure that there are not multiple records in Sugar with Gary's information. If Gary might have a lead record and a contact record, um, or maybe even several lead records, depending on my marketing process, if he's filled out various forms over time. So I'm going to use my global search tool to first do a search for Gary, and it looks like the only result is the contact that I've already got linked here, so I don't have to worry about that. But the process has been built in such a way that I can link multiple records in here into this erasure request, and I can mark data to be erased from all of them before I actually process the erasing. So the way I do that marking um, is through this mark to erase action. And this, in particular, is the feature that is locked down to administrators and users in that data privacy manager role. So your regular users won't see Mark to Erase. Only users who you've, you've um, selected to give access to this function will have that function available. When I choose Mark to Erase, Sugar is going to bring up a list of all of the fields flagged as PII for this contact. And so I can see here are all of my PII fields. Here's the value of the fields for Gary, if we have data available in those fields. Um, and here's the source and the last update date for those fields. Now, depending on what Gary requested, I might have to delete all of his PII data. Or maybe he's only requested that I delete certain fields, in which case I can select just the fields that he's requested me to delete. Once I have selected the fields that I need to delete, I'll go ahead and mark those fields for erasure. And this is where if I had multiple records that I needed to go through and process, I would repeat that step. So if I had multiple contacts, there were some duplicates, or if I had leads from various sources, I could mark each of them for erasure. Once I've completed doing that for each record, then I want to go ahead and process the erasing. And so that's when I would click this green Erase and Complete record here at the top. I do get a warning to make sure that I am actually ready to click that button. I fully understand I'm going to permanently erase the data from 31 fields, and there is no way to recover that data after I've erased it because, again, GDPR requires me to truly erase that data. So I'll go ahead and do that. And if we go ahead and refresh this list now, we can see Sugar's actually added, a, I call it a pill, a little tag-like thing here, 
um, where I can see that those values have been erased. Um, they were also smart enough to add in a link that I could click if the name has been erased, because obviously the name it usually serves as the link. And so I can come in here and I can see, you know, the reason I don't have some of these data fields filled out is because Gary has requested that they be deleted, or in this case someone, I don't know who anymore, has been has requested they be deleted. Um, if I get consent later, that data gets reprovided to me, I can always edit these fields and fill them out again in the future. Um, so there's no restriction from me populating that data back in if and when I get consent to track that data again. All right, so that's what the erasure process looks like. Part of GDPR is also managing consent for being able to contact people. And it's not just a blanket consent. Yes, I have your consent to send you a gazillion emails about 30 different topics. You actually have to get consent for each specific topic. So in the screenshot here, and we'll take a look at this in Sugar in just a second, you have to track what type of communications you have consent to send to this person, this contact. And another thing I'm going to show is how do I view the personal information for a contact, that PII data within Sugar. They've added a new view to the drop down next to the edit where you can get that information. So let's take a look at that. Here I am on a contact, Malcolm Clinton. I have a drop down here for business purposes consented for. And this is just a standard drop down. You can edit these fields or drop down values as you see fit and save those values and use this for your marketing email campaigns or your phone campaigns or mailing campaigns. This consent last updated does not automatically update. You have to manually update it. You could add code that would let you automatically updated if you wanted to. But it's important to make sure you're tracking this information for compliance. And again, under the edit drop down here, there's a new item called view personal information. That's going to show you all of the different information as well as the source for it. So for example, here it's showing me Chris Oliver typed in the name Malcolm Clinton and when it was last updated. So it's got a bit of that tracking in it. As what well. Using this with your change log, you can see all of the different changes through history. But this is just showing us the most recent information and who did that. And that view is one of the ways you could respond to someone's request for what data you're tracking about them, is you can pull up that view and you can print it off and mail it to them, or you can copy and paste it into an email uh, or an Excel file and send it to them that way. Uh, so that's certainly a way that you could handle that request. Something else that GDPR specifically touches on is opt-ins, so the ability of someone to opt-in. Um, and in particular, GDPR requires that someone specifically consents to be opted in to specific groups or tracking of data or marketing campaigns and so on. Uh, so this ties to that consent field that Justin was just showing you. But this is something that is a pretty significant change for marketing departments versus what they have been able to do in the past, which was kind of just assume consent. Um, GDPR requires that someone specifically select to opt in to give you their information and to be included in marketing campaigns and so on. Um, as you might know, 
when you put a new email address into Sugar, by default, that email address is marked as opted in. And so that's a potential conflict with what GDPR requires. Um, and therefore, Sugar has added a new setting that allows you to default new email addresses to opt it out instead of opt it in. Now that's going to opt them out from campaigns that you might be sending through Sugar's campaigns modules. Um, or if you have a marketing tool integrated with Sugar, and one of the data fields that that marketing tool syncs is the opt-in, opt-out flag, uh, it's going to be really important that you are tracking that correctly in Sugar. If you're not using Sugar for marketing lists, the setting may not be as relevant to you. Um, but if you are, again, this is going to be important for making sure that you are defaulting correctly to opting out as opposed to opting in. And another setting that Sugar has added with Sugar 8 is the option to disable activity stream. Um, this goes back to the idea that the erasure flow does not currently delete data from the activity stream, and the activity stream could contain some of that PII data. So the erasure flow does delete PII data from the audit logs, um, but not from the activity stream, at least in the 8.0 release. And therefore, again, if GDPR compliance is something that you are worried about, which you should be, you probably have data on some EU citizens in your database somewhere, um, you may need to disable the activity stream through this new setting uh, until Sugar provides a better solution for this. That is something they are definitely considering for an upcoming release, uh, having a more fine-grained solution or erasing the data from uh, the activity stream in some way. So it is certainly something they are considering, but at least in the 8.0 release, uh, the only way to keep PII data out of activity stream is to disable it altogether. All right, and then one last slide here related to GDPR features, and this is an important one. Uh, most, if not all, of these GDPR features in Sugar 8 need to be enabled by you when you upgrade to Sugar 8. So most of them are not enabled by default. Uh, the data privacy, module, data, data privacy module needs to be enabled in the Display Modules Administrator tool. It's going to be hidden by default. Uh, that Data Privacy Manager role, you may need to add users to that role so that they have access to do that erasing of data. That opt-out new email addresses by default setting is under System Email Settings under the Administrator tools. Um, the activity stream setting, I'll jump down to that one for a second, is under admin system settings to disable the activity stream. And then marking fields that contain PII data so that they're included in that PII view and in the erasure flow, that's done through Studio. So you need to go through each of your modules and mark whatever fields contain that personally identifiable information.